They're big bass. I can't control them. Oh my god. Ooh, that's a big one. I know, we can't, I can't control them. Yeah, close. Well, no, over five. Again, beetroot. The camera's on. <laughs> Tom, give me a picture of that, will you? Let's put on a scale real quick. Right on. A little under, a little, a little under six. So it's late April in 2022, and we are heading for Lake George on our annual spring attack. Now, Lake George is one of those places that's just got layer upon layer of history, as I've told you before. There are places like that. I mean, every place really has it. But in the case of Lake George, it's big history. So we're talking about everything from the French and Indian Wars, not war, to the American Revolution and the War of 1812, as far as a historic region of the Northeast, Lake George is like the beating heart of one of them. So this year what we're planning to do is focus on the events of 1755 when Sir William Johnson establishes the first British claims to Lake George and the attack by the French. Descau, a German commander of a French force that will in fact fight it out for control of the southern end of that lake and the gateway to New York. Remember New York back in 1755 was really Albany south to New York City. And the French, French Canada, really starts on Lake Champlain at Crown Point where Fort St. Frederick is. So this is all about the struggle for territory between two warring empires, European empires, with American colonists and the native peoples of the region caught in the middle. And that's what we're going to focus on. We're also going to focus on catching some serious smallmouth bass. Lake Trout. And there's the heat. Oh, look at you. Large mouth. Not very big, but. Beetroot with the blade bait. Fire tiger. Oh, that's a nice fish. That's a hog. Beetroot on, oh, on fire tiger off at the boat. The beat. The beat. <laughs> he got the beat. Yeah, we got it. Go, go. The, yeah, it's beetroot and he's got a blade bait. Of course he's going to have two of them. Ready? 
All right. <laughs> this is bullshit. <laughs> this is bullshit. I got me one. Come on, you too. Come on, hold on. Hold on, you guys. Don't wheel them out. Let me get one. Looks like we're They're like twins. It's like they're they're barely hitting. Yeah, very subtle. This is the hold on, give me a minute. <laughs> Dave is on. Where are oh look at one right at the boom. Look at that. As soon as it went down. Triple? Beat root? Yep. Quadruple. Look at mark this spot. Dave's got one. We all got one. Alright, still got him. I figure out how to do this. It's unreal. Okay, we're gonna do Tommy's on. I hear a beetroot. As I was posing with the camera, I get me one. One just come and hit me. I didn't even want to catch him. <laughs> I woke him up, boy. Beat root. Just laying it down. Oh, that's a nice one. Oh, ho, 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 ho. that's a spa Oh, that is a that is a good fish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Show that to the camera quick. Oh yeah, Woo. nice fish. And you imagine, 1755, this mountain range is a wall, but right on the other side of it is South Bay of Lake Champlain. So, Bescal, the French commander, rather than come down the lake where he'd give away his position quickly to English scouts, marches behind the mountains, led by his Kahnawaga Mohawk, straight toward the forces of Sir William Johnson, 10 miles south. And Beetroot is on. So I got that double rig. Look at it. Look at it. Look at it. Nice. You like that. Yeah. Figure, you figure that is that high off the bottom, you know, right. and it's it's got the eyes. <laughs> yeah, I put a blade on. No braid. braid yeah, I, I'm using. Uh, it's actually like multicolor braid because I uh, like it. No, that's why I just saw the. Like... I like it because I can see. The bottom, you know where I am. Oh, that's a nice fish. Now don't let him um, get away. Pull him up. Immediately grab the lure. Just pull him out by the lure. That's what I do. Oh yeah, that's a nice size. Not huge. That's about a three and a half. Three, three and a half. If you catch that in Massachusetts, you're jumping up and down. Come on.
he would like disappear. He can find it. We got a double. Oh, you do have a double. Look at that. that double. That's impressive. Now, how do you do? How do you do a double ripper? Oh, one of them came off at the boat. That's impressive. <laughs> a double. They're stacked up here, for sure. If they're, if they're gonna double like that, then you're stacked. You're, you're definitely talking about a stack. I just had another hit on the sink. So we're pulling out on our second day here. <laughs> and we're making our foray into the north arm of the lake. <laughs> That's our plan. We're sticking with it. Lake George is really a wind tunnel. If you're there on the wrong day, you can be in three to four foot seas and get the heck kicked out of you. But, you know, if you're lucky, like we were on this uh, morning, it's calm as glass. And I don't care if it's rough or calm, it's probably the most beautiful lake in terms of its panorama, as you're going to get, maybe with Lake Champlain as a close second. And... Being 35 miles long, sometimes you can make some long runs. Make the runs when the water's calm. Save yourself some time. No, out, out here, in this messy area. He's not, he's not that, he's all right. But he, but he, uh, he totally surprised me. He hit it when I was just sitting there. I wasn't moving it at all. Oh, poor guy. Get in the water! I'm surprised! Yes, that's a nice one, Tom. Nice, nice fish. It's spunky. Tom! Tom! You gotta get him into the boat, Tom! Look at that fish. Oh, hold a stand man, Mrs. Oh, Tom just lifts it right in. That's a care. That's a big fish. That's a, that's a good three and a half, four. That's like what I have. This is before. this. Holy shit! Whoa! That's a big, I gotta keep the. Don't go and break him off again. I gotta keep this. No, I'm gonna keep him. Oh, he's, oh, he's, he's, he's in the mouth too. He's oh my god! It. Look at the size of him. Oh, yeah. Dude, this is a big. Fish. We got the camera. We're gonna have to beep that. Okay. Big fish, big beauty. Uh, get the net. Okay, hang on. Big fat. <sighs> slob. That is freaking huge. That's a slob beat root. Yeah, let me I get the I get this thing. Okay, oh. Tom, get a picture of that. That's like the one I missed. We're gonna call him beeping beat root, because I had a beep we have to beep like five of these. Stand man on. This feels like a good fish. Because it's a laker. Really? And a, no, it's two. I got a double of fox. Double of big fish. These are two big fish. Come on. Can you can you get the motor going and we can move forward? Because we're going to hit the back. I can't. These are both big fish. Check it out. Look at the size of these bass. It's a double of two. There's two very good size. Okay. Um, what am I going to do here, B? I think I'm going to... Okay. We're, we're planing them. We're planing them. This is where a net would be a good idea. I'm going to do a double whipper. So you rip the one with the... Uh, you rip the one that's got the... Fly, and I'll get the other guy. <laughs> oh, I got the fly guy. How funny is that? Hold it up. We gotta see. 
So I thought it was a laker. I saw this long thing moving forward in the water. Two! Let me get another two for one. Tom, get a two for one shot with me. Oh, he jumped. Oh, he's up. Yeah, they're out further. Like, maybe if it's been warmer, they're, they're not out so far, but today they seem to be out further. Oh, this guy's on the fly, Tom. Get ready. Yeah, I'm hopping it on the bottom in there. Double. Yeah, this one's a good one too. Another double. Like a, uh, no, it looks like a baited, uh... I'm gonna need some help here! <laughs> got another double. Look at this! He's Dave, got it, look at Scott! Got double Scott, double. look! I know, Dave's got oh, a double too. We're all on, all four of us. <laughs> Holy shit, that's hilarious. What'd you get a double on? What? I got it on the blade. One of these is a pig, too. The camera's on. Yeah. Can you pop this when you get a chance? He's. Oh, I think what's happening, you're not feeling anything on the drop, but when you pick up, when you go to do the digging, you motion upwards. Then you feel it, yeah. So it's not like you're going through the motion with the digging motion. There we go. I was about to turn the camera off. <laughs> I was like, ah, nothing. Oh, he's following up. I know, I'm gonna oh, get, two. I'm gonna go for the double here. Double. No, he's gonna get it. Oh! <laughs> I had one on, Dave. The second one was coming for the fly, so I was playing with it, and the other one got, they both got off. Yeah, one was on coming up. The fly was trailing. The result was a greedy guy came roaring up. Oh, the beetroot! Oh, that blade is down there. Dance, feel it vibrate when you bring the rod tip up. Scott barely moves the beetroot. He barely moves it. Doesn't give it a lot. I give it more than him. But his technique is by far and away the best. So I would say if you're trying to learn a, a blade, you should watch the beetroot. There he is. It's all skill. It's all skill. Watch. Ready? Watch. See the skill? Unbelievable. Unreal. Years, 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 of years of practice with the blade. It's all skill. Not too much luck. Not too much luck. Not a lot of luck in fishing. Mm-hmm. 
Ooh, that's a good one. Yeah. That's, that's a good a, one. Oh my god. Oh! That's a monster. Wait, how, Dave, how do you do your walk so he doesn't jump? Dave, uh, you, you need a special walk. Give me some more line. Give me some more line. Tom, you're never going to catch a fish that big before. After. Before, after. Oh, don't lose him. Oh my god. Get him, get him, get him. Ooh. Oh, that's a good fish. Grab him. Grab him. Yeah. Oh, no, Grab no, him by no. thumb up. Just thumb him. <laughs> it's a big bass. That's a big fish. Put him on a scale. Nice. I don't think he's as big as mine. No, that's not a bad one. No, he's hooked in the belly. Could, they're swarming it. <laughs> nope, I just had a little one. Tom is on. Right here, look at this. Where are we on? Oh, missed one. Just when it touched the bottom, this guy hit. Like he was toying with me. Like he was sitting down. There. Oh, he's on the fly. Yes. A fly fish, Tom. Oh, yes. Scott's on again. Three root. I missed three. I he one. says he missed three. Missed three one. You know, if, if other people said that, I might not believe them. But it, we're talking about the beetroot and the blade. And so, I believe him. He tricks them. I'm not even going to touch it. It's too small for him to touch. <laughs> he's got another hog. Look at that. And he's got that fire tiger on. He's going to touch this one with his thumb. This one, I Look at that one. This feels like a Laker. Yeah, it's a Laker. Got a Laker. Got a Laker. Laker for Laker. It's going to be something. Dave, we can do the double net. Get your boat over here. <laughs> yeah, I got I Oh, he snapped me off. Son of a... The sight... Of the bloody morning scout. Bloody being the key. This rock. With the obelisk that you can see rising above it. Marks the death site. Of Colonel Ephraim Williams of Deerfield, Massachusetts. And Williams to inspire his men. Who had walked into an ambush. Ascended that rock. To rally them and get them to make a counter charge into the jaws of the ambush. He saw that the French and Conewaga Mohawk were up here on these heights. Working their way all the way down and across to where we see the sheds on the other side of the rise here. He was surrounded in an ambush and he chose to attack the jaws of the ambush which Tactically is a, a great move. It's what you're supposed to do. But it wasn't to be. Concealed just above us, several French and Indian adversaries aimed at the colonel as he exposed himself on that rock for his men to see, to give his men courage and conviction 
and he was shot in the head and fell from the rock dead on September 8th. And from that point, his force would retreat rapidly toward Fort William Henry in its sad state of construction with Fiesco's forces hard on their heels. Just to the north of here, Tyanoga or Hendrick was killed. He had been up maybe beyond my truck here, further up the road when the attack occurred and he had fled down and across the ravine and his body was found somewhere on the other side here in an unmarked grave, I suppose, Hendrick lies. Southern end of Lake George is quite something to see. Gotta watch the golf carts. Now, it's off-season. We're talking about late April. Actually, this is the first day of May. You can see Fort William Henry right here. And on the other side, the big steamboats. You come up here, you go on a dinner cruise, a fireworks cruise. Enjoy Lake George. But down this end, Lake George Village, it's kind of like a lakes version of Disneyland. And it is packed in the summer. You barely walk down this sidewalk. But I'll tell you what, it's worth the trip. Yeah, exactly.